Hello, welcome ladies and gentlemen to today's tutorial. Today we are going to look at the mammary glands. The lay person will of course call the mammary glands the breasts. Uh, these breasts are two and are found in the pectoral region of the human body. Now uh, these breasts, you know, developmentally will actually come from you know the sweat glands, specifically modified apocrine sweat glands. Therefore, you will actually be, I mean, interested in talking about this when you look at the integumentary system. But because of its relevance in the female adult, by way of helping to nourish the newborn, we want to actually put it under what we call the reproductive system, being an accessory organ of the reproductive system. Now, for males, it is less developed, and therefore, you know, we say it is rudimentary. You know, except in individuals who present with gynecomasia, with large and large breasts, okay, that, that is when you know they tend to have theirs being developed. Now, this breast, or actually in females, we are interested more in females, will be hemispherical in sexually active individuals, will be hemispherical. But of course, you know, at old age, it tends to be pendulous, okay, it tends to sag, and then it is pendulous. And we expect that normally it begins from you know the second rib you know cranially up to you know the sixth rib caudally. Then of course it is also going to, you know move at from medial I mean medially from the lateral border of the sternum to the mid axillary line. Now these breasts yes we also have what we call nipple which we expect that is related to the you know the fourth intercostal space. But of course, for most females, because of the variation in you know the position of the nipples, you know by way of how heavy they are, this position may be variable. Yes, it may be variable actually. Now, this breast, you know, is actually an exocrine gland. If it is an exocrine gland, then it will have a duct system, and by way of yes, trying to make these product from it a sign you know, it's actually a compound, you know, alveolar gland compound violet gland will have it a sign of making this kind of milk now one thing is that when these i mean milk when this milk is made they have to be moved okay into the nipple area where of course you know the newborn will have to suckle to take in you know the breast milk therefore we have what we call myoepithelial cells which upon contraction which surround these i mean a sign therefore upon contraction will cause you know the ejection of milk from the secretory unit into of course the internal blood duct then eventually into the internal blood duct so we actually see what we call the lactic flux ducts and then all, all these ones now remember that if you looking at the breast we will look at three areas we look at the skin we talk about you know the areola the pigmented area which is very important you know producing some kind of i mean, I mean uh, lipoid you know i mean fluid or i mean some kind of oily fluid which will actually help to prevent what you call cracking you know around the breast area during you know suckling by the or making trying to make i mean the breast area a bit you know smooth to prevent you know dryness now one thing that is also important is that for the fetus sorry for the newborn to actually locate of course you know the breast that is why this area which we call the area is quite pigmented yeah that's one thing then of course it's also these secretions have kind of you know some kind of attractive i mean attractants okay to the will be attractant to the i mean the newborn so without much ado yes let's begin our journey looking at the breast then of course we also look at the functional parenchyma of the breast then of course we look at the supporting framework by way of the stroma being the fatty stroma as well as you know the fibrous stroma we will end with actually some disorders which will be related you know developmentally regarding you know the breast all right so here we are this is the breast okay the female breast which you said that it is hemispherical half of a sphere okay hemispherical and yes apart from nourishing yes it will also be I mean, important erogenously as well as you know i mean sexual stimulations are actually concerned and then I indicated that it's going to actually begin from what we call rib 
2 all the way to rep 6. Okay, rep 2 all the way to rep 6. And then the nipple, this nipple is a bit at a lower level. Yes, there's this variation. But we expect that yeah, there will be first intercourse, this is the second, third, and fourth. We expect that nipple should be around you know, the fourth intercostal space. Okay, which of course we don't really appreciate it here. Now I said that apart from this, it's also going to actually come all the way. Okay, by way of eight thickness, okay, from its medial aspect, okay, from the lateral border of the stain, the body of the stain actually, to the mid axillary line. Okay, the midline of the axilla. Now in the axilla, we have this area, okay, which we call it. I mean, the anterior as very full, there will be a posterior as very full, but in between them, there will be a mid as very line, and that is where you know the breast tissue will actually end. Now, this breast tissue is actually we expect that it is actually superficial, okay? It lies in the superficial fascia, it lies in the superficial fascia, but with the exception of this area, okay? So, there's the actually there's the left breast, okay? This so there's the right breast actually. This is the lateral portion and there's the medial portion. So this is the area which relates to the armpit, the axilla. And therefore, there is this on this superior portion, some extension of the breast tissue into the axilla. And this is what we call the axillary tail, axillary tail of spence, axillary tail of spence. The axillary tail of spence actually pierces, you know, into the deep fascia, okay, around the third, you know, rib, at the level of the third rib. So it is only the axillary tail which is found in the deep fascia. The remaining substance of the, I mean, the breast will be found in the superficial fascia. Superficial fascia. Now, so superficially, okay, there will be skin to be related to the skin, and of course the superficial fascia. But with the deep relations, which are very important, okay, that we mentioned. Okay, so this is the breast, the substance of the breast. Okay, then it will have a deep, okay, behind the substance of the breast. Now you can see that there's this muscle over here, which we'll come to. Over here, there's this potential space. Now this space over here is known as the retro mammary space. Now the word retro means behind, so retro mammary space over here. And then we will, apart from this retro mammary space, which is actually rich in loose connective tissue, and therefore will help in actual free movement yes of the breast we are going to also have what we call the deep fascia now this deep fascia is actually modified one okay this white area that you find here is the deep fascia this deep fascia actually surrounds the pectoralis major muscle and therefore we call this one pectoral fascia pectoral fascia this pectoral fascia is actually a modified deep fascia which actually surrounds this pectoral you know major muscle okay yes apart from that yes we are also going to find what we call the pectoralis you know minor muscle this is the pectoralis major muscle okay which is surrounded by this you know deep fascia pectoral fascia then we also have what we call the pectoralis minor muscle okay so these are the pectoralis minor muscle okay then apart from that although we don't see it here but it will also posterior to be related to what we call the serratus anterior muscle as well as of course the external oblique you know muscle external oblique muscle but of course we said that these are the ribs okay and in between the ribs there will be intercostal spaces which will be occupied by these ribs known as intercostal ribs of course the intercostal ribs you have what you call the in, i mean internal so we have it in, in, in the most we have you know internal of course you know external intercostal you know muscles but of course, generally we call these ones intercostal muscles. So that's the posterior relations regarding the breast. Now I said that for the breast, I'm going to talk about, I mean, now the reason why, you know, we want to call this breast, you know, mammary gland is that, of course, you know, in Latin, we call it, you know, mama. Okay, so making it, you know, called you know, mammary glands. So actually in Greek, we call it mama. Then of course, you know, in Latin, it will be called, you know, mastoids. Okay, mastoids, and that's why inflammation of the breast we we'll call it, you know, mast I mean, mastitis, mastitis. Now, therefore, I'm going to actually talk about, you know, for me to talk about the, I mean, the, the breast. 
I'm going to first talk about you know its skin. Okay, so we have skin over here. Okay, now over here there will be hair follicles. Okay, then it it will also be rich in fat as well over here. Now when I come here, this is the nipple. This is the nipple. Okay, which will actually be pierced by about fifteen to of course twenty you know duct which we call them lactiferous ducts because of course we are going to have you know 50 to 20 loops okay which are going to make these kind of breast milk and they will open okay in the mid nipple by way of these kind of openings that you find here which we call them nipple pores okay so that the breast milk will actually come out for the fetus to actually you know, feed on now for the breast milk to actually come out what happens is that suckling is needed okay so the suckling is needed to cause it cause that kind of reflex so there will be some kind of mechanical receptors over here which will stimulate i mean the hypothalamus also influence the hypothalamus to produce what you call you know oxytocin to actually help you know in the ejection of milk so that is what i mean we have these i mean nipple pores and these nipple pores okay okay in the nipple will have these ducts opening in there and these ducts represent what you call the terminal portion of the lactiferous duct, lactiferous duct, okay, opening in there. Now, this nipple, okay, although here yeah, the skin, it is devoid of hair, it is also devoid of fat. But what we find is that there are some smooth muscles around here which are circular and longitudinal, okay, and then it also contains some, you know, sweat glands as well as sebaceous, you know, glands. As well as some sebaceous ones so that's with the nipple okay now the next one that we find over here is this pigmented circular area that we find here and this pigmented area is known as areola areola now this areola yes we said is pigmented to actually help so that you know the i mean the newborn will easily find you know the breast area especially the nipple to help in the suckling now it is also going to have what you call it's also going to be devoid of you know hair there wouldn't be any hair here there would also not be any fat over here but it will contain some specialized oil secretory you know glands which represent which are represented by these tubercles which you can see here there are some tubercles over here which we call them montgomery tubercles montgomery tubercles now these montgomery tubercles are going to produce this kind of oily products okay to help actually during suckling to prevent what you call cracking okay or to not to make you know the nipple area dry all right now so that is with the i mean the i mean these kind of uh, that's with the areola areola which is related just surrounded you know the nipple area now having talked about the skin now the next thing that we have to look at is the functional parenchyma of you know the breast so there's a hemi section of the breast actually a sagittal section now in the functional parenchyma we are going to find what we call i mean the glandular tissue now the glandular tissue is going to contain these loops okay so you can find these loops okay so these are the loops of the breast okay now these loops are going to have the secretory units okay the sinus okay or the alveola will be there and then we will have those ducts taking those and i said that those secretory units will be surrounded okay by what we call myoepithelial cells so that upon, upon contraction they will cause ejection of the milk into of course the interlobular ducts then into interlobular ducts okay now these ducts are highly branching now one thing that i have to let me just say this that these montgomery you know glands they tend to increase in number okay during actually pregnancy and of course lactation so that's one thing i have to know of course because of its role that is going to play now so that is what we are going to find so terminally we are going to have these ones and as you come okay proximally then we have the duct so the main duct which we are going to find yes will be these lactiferous you know ducts which will actually enlarge become what we call lactiferous sinuses or the ampulla of the lactiferous ducts 
and then eventually continue as the lactiferous duct, which will open into the nipple by way of opening into the pores of the nipple. Okay, so that is one thing that we are going to find. Now, one thing again is that these loops, okay, of the breast will be separated from each other, sorry, from one another, by way of these whitish areas that we find over here. Okay, these whitish areas serving as, you know, scepter, which we call them, you know, the corpus ligament, corpus ligament, or the suspensory ligament of copper, of copper, C-O-P-E-R, okay, suspensory ligament of copper. Now, these suspensory ligaments are also very important because they actually help, you know, to attach, you know, these, the, I mean, functional parenchyma to what we call the pectoral fascia so that it gives it some kind of support, you know, some kind of support as well. So, that is with the, so, therefore, it tells us that because they are going to have, these ones are supposed to be actually 15 to 20, okay, these, I mean, uh, these loops are going to be 15 to 20. And therefore, we also have these lactiferous ducts, okay, having 15 of them, opening independently in the nipple pores, in the nipple pores. So that is with the, the functional parenchyma of, you know, the... Now, one thing that you have to know is that these loops, okay, and for that matter, the signer, okay, they are, I mean, enlargement during, you know, I mean, pregnancy as well as, you know, lactation will be actually as a result of what we call progesterone. So progesterone is going to influence the enlargement of these, I mean, uh, loops, okay, loops, and for that matter, the signer, the secretory unit, during what we call, I mean, pregnancy. And then estrogen will actually cause enlargement or development of these, you know, I mean, ducts, okay, during I mean, uh, uh, what do you call pregnancy and of course, you know, lactation. So these will be the ducts, okay, developing under the influence of estrogen, under the influence of estrogen, okay? So that's what we are going to find. Now, the next thing that we also have to know is that, yes, this breast is quite heavy, therefore, it has to be supported. Therefore, we're going to have stroma, given it's the supporting framework. Now, this stroma, yes, we've already seen one of them, being what we call the suspensory ligaments, okay? Suspensory ligaments, okay? It's going to give it the support. Then apart from that, we're also going to have what we call support by way of fat. So it's with these yellowish areas that we find over here is fat. Now, the breast is highly, you know, rich in a lot of, you know, fat, okay? To actually, yes, hold it, you know, giving it this kind of, you know, support. Okay, giving it this kind of you know support so this is actually what we call you know the breast now during i mean the fats that we have now during early pregnancy what happens is that the breast will actually go through rapid you know hypertrophy and of course hyperplasia will actually increase in size okay with increasing branching here and there okay then during later pregnancy the alveoli or the secretory unit the sign will get filled with what we call milk with milk and then, you know, after lactation, you know, the alveoli will actually, you know, shrink or the asina will shrink and then most of them will disappear. But of course, when there's pregnancy again, there will be reappearance of these ones by way of these estrogen, of course, pre progesterone helping in that regard. Then after, you know, menopause, what happens is that the breast tissue will actually atrophy rapidly. Okay, we'll go through some kind of, I mean, atrophy. So that during a sexually, you know, active age, you know, it's quite lighter compared to, you know, what we call old age, old age. So this is the breast. Now, one thing that is important is that we have to talk about, you know, its lymphatic, you know, drainage. Now, the breast is actually going to have a lot of, you know, lymphatic drainage, but the principal ones are going to come from, you know, those ones which are related to the axilla, those ones which are related to the axillary, you know, area axillary region and we are going to you know actually have five groups of them in the axilla we have the anterior we have the posterior of course you know the lateral central of course apical groups okay apart from this we're going to have also you know the internal mammary or the parasternal you know lymph nodes as well then you know of course there could be other ones such as you know the supraclavicular lectopectorial you know the posterior intercostal yes, sub and of course you know sub 
you know, peritoneal lymph plexus is also, you know, actually formed. Now, these lymphatics are very important because they represent the site of spread of, you know, the carcinoma or the cancer of the breast. So that importantly, what happens is that there's this kind of communication between, assuming these are the two, are two, I mean, breasts, there's some kind of communication between the left and of course the right, you know, breast by way of the lymphatics. Okay, therefore, if there's one, there's magnetic in one part of the breast, it can actually spread to the other breast, other breast. So these are the things, okay, which you have to understand. So almost always, if you have one breast having cancer, then it will be, I mean, spreading to the other. Therefore, during surgery, if you want to remove any carcinoma, any cancer, okay, of the breast, from one of the breasts, then care must be taken not to actually cause any spread, okay, to the other side, surgically, actually. So that is one thing about the breasts, okay, by way of its lymphatic drainage. Now, this breast, yes, is also highly vascularized. It has a rich, you know, blood supply. And by way of, yes, arterial supply, we are going to have what we call the perforating branches of what we call internal mammary artery or the internal thoracic artery. Of course, we can't see that one here. Then, of course, we also have what we call some branches of the axillary artery, such as, you know, the lateral thoracic coming from the second part of the axillary artery. You know, of course, you know, looking at, you know, the superior thoracic, you know, of course, coming from the first part, you know, the thoracoacromial or acromial thoracic, you know, artery coming from actually the second part, you know, of the axillary artery. Then, of course, you also have some lateral branches coming from what we call the posterior intercostal, you know, artery. Now, one thing is that with respect to venous drainage, they will be drained by corresponding veins. But for veins, we use the term tributaries. Okay, so for instance, in the, I mean, the, we also have what we call some tributaries coming from what we call internal mammary artery, okay, draining into the internal mammary artery, artery. Then we also have some, you know, tributaries coming from, you know, lateral thoracic, you know, superior thoracic, and of course, you know, thoracoacromial veins, okay, which are branches. So, which are tributaries of you know the axillary vein. Then of course we also have some what we call tributaries coming from you know, I mean the drain into what we call the posterior intercostal I mean veins, posterior intercostal veins. Now one thing that is you know important that we say here is that there's this kind of you know anastomotic you know connection. There's this kind of you know anastomotic connection between these you know veins. And these kind of, you know, anastomotic connections are going to be, you have what we call the superficial part and you have what we call the deep, you know, part. You know, these are actually going to help. Now, one thing is that, importantly, cancer may spread, okay, true. So this anastomotic connection actually happens around the nipple area, okay. They happen actually around the nipple area. And these kind of anastomotic connections, mainly the deep one, will communicate with what we call the para you know vertebral plexus the deep anastomotic connection which is around the nipple area will communicate with what we call para you know vertebral plexus okay, so if we talk about para vertebral plexus you know around over here okay so these are the vertebrae so around it alongside you have what we call para vertebral plexus and these para vertebral plexus also communicate with some group of plexus around the anterior aspect of the bodies of the vertebrae, especially the lumbar area. Okay, so these, I mean, plexus is known as what you call basin plexus, basin plexus, and these basin plexus actually help to spread the cancer cells around the lumbar area, around the lumbar area. So someone may have, you know, breast cancer, and the person will be suffering from, you know, pain around, you know, the lumbar area of, you know, the vertebral column, and of course, this is the reason because. What we are saying is that, you know, the deep group, okay, point form anastomosis around the nipple area will have communication with what we call paravertebral, you know, plexus, plexus of veins, which also communicates with those veins, okay, which we call them, I mean, basin plexus along the anterior aspect of the bodies of the vertebrae, especially the lumbar area. Therefore, even apart from affecting the lumbar area, if it persists, then it can actually affect, you know, the, I mean, spinal cord around the lumbar area, lumbar area. So that is what is going to help in that spread. 
but even more dangerously what happens is that yeah this basin plexus also have communication with what we call the dural sinus okay you know dural sinuses so which will cover actually the brain okay who actually i mean affects eventually will affect what we call the lepto meninges now these lepto meninges represent the pia matter and of course the arachnoid matter they may also get you know i mean the cancer may spread to these you know areas you know as well so this is what actually yes is going to happen but one thing that we've said is that yes generally the breast by way of hormones importantly estrogen is going to help in duct i mean enlargement of the ducts or the development of the ducts progesterone yes in the asina or the lobular i mean development yes prolactin yes actually coming from the anterior pituitary gland yes who actually help in what we call i mean milk production milk production in the i mean asina then of course you know oxytocin during cycle will cause you know i mean contractions i mean to who we'll call the release of these i mean i mean I mean, contraction of these myopsia cells to cause, you know, ejection of milk, you know, into the nipple or the openings in the nipple. So these are the things. Now, one thing that we have to know is that developmentally there could be some abnormalities, some abnormalities, such that you have individuals having no nipple. So if you have no nipple, we consider that condition as apelia without nipple. Then you have some individuals too with multiple nipples. And these multiple nipples will actually happen along this line, this area, which you know we call it. I mean the milk line, the milk line. So there's the milk line, and it's usually the milk line where people may have multiple, multiple nipples. Okay, so that's polythelia, polythelia. Then there could be a situation where actually the nipple may become inverted. Okay, there will be inversion of this nipple or retraction of this nipple. But usually, I mean, it tends to get, you know, corrected with time without any, you know, surgery at all. So that is with inversion, inverted, you know, nipple. Of course, I've told you about gynecomastia, where males will tend to develop, you know, glandular tissue, actually, of the breast. Instead of it being rudimentary, they tend to have, you know, quite great, you know, substantial, you know, breasts. Okay. Then there could be a situation where we have what we call micromasia. Micromasia. Now, for micromasia, then the breast is actually small, especially in females. Micromasia. Then, of course, we have micromasia. Then there could be macro, you know, masia. Macromasia, where you have the breast to be very, you know, large. Now, there could be another situation where, of course, especially in females, or it could be in males as well, where there's no breast tissue as well at, at all. No breast tissue, no areola, no nipple. And we call that condition amestia, amestia. So amestia, absence of any of these breast tissues, amestia. But there's also what we call amestia. Now this is A M A Z I E, amestia. Now if there is amestia, the breast tissue is absent, the areola is absent, but there is, you know, what we call nipple. Nipple will be present. We call it amestia, amestia. So. Um, that is essentially what I have for you today. So today we talked about the breast. You know, mainly the breast is going to be very important. And of course, you know, some old individuals also want to suckle, you know, the breasts of females. But that is not really going to result in milk production. Of course, if during the lady is in lactation, then of course that one can happen. So thank you very much and may God richly bless you.